Welcome to my Back to Homeschool Planning Series Part 1, figuring out why we homeschool and reflecting on our past year. Welcome back to Regular Secular Mama. If you're new here, I'm so glad you're joining me. My name is Cassie and I'm a homeschool mom to two kiddos who are currently ages 9 and 12 years old. I'll be spending the next month or so on a big planning series just for you. I am wrapping up my sixth year of homeschooling and getting ready for our seventh year of homeschooling, so I felt now is a really good time to walk you guys through the steps that I take when I plan for a new homeschool year. Some of the things you'll see are things that I've already done in my planning process, but as much as possible, I am going to be going through these steps with you, so let's go. Before we get into it, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. These things help my videos reach more viewers out there. The first video in this five part series is all about reflection. If you've been following me, this may not be new to you. I talked about this a little bit in the past, but it's really important to do that, especially right now when you're in the middle of transitioning from one school year to the next, whether you school round or you follow an academic calendar, you're still gonna have probably some period of time where you feel like you're moving from one level to the next level of your homeschool. So it's a good time to reflect on everything that you've used so far, um, how things are going so far, what, what needs are changing, how your lifestyle or your schedule is changing, and what that might look like for the following year. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to think about is why you homeschool in the first place. If you're brand new to homeschooling, you just pulled your kids out of school or they're you know, coming up on kindergarten or something, this may be something that you've just now started to think about. But especially if you've been homeschooling for a while, it may have been a long time since you sat down and really thought about the why and the reasons why you homeschool. So I'm gonna encourage you to give it a shot anyway. Go ahead and grab a notebook or a piece of paper or a receipt or something and start jotting down answers to questions like, what are things that maybe turned you off of a traditional schooling approach? And what are some things that appeal to you or attracted you to homeschooling? The second thing you're gonna to wanna to think about is how the past homeschool year went if you're a returning homeschooler. So let's dig into what went well and what didn't. I personally like to jot down my kids separately uh, and look at each individual kid and things that they used and how their schooling went. If you have a ton of kids, this, this might be a little bit cumbersome, but that's just how I like to do it. So go ahead and grab your piece of paper, jot down your first kid's name and start answering questions like, where did you notice the most growth? What areas do you see uh, room for some improvement? What did they seem to enjoy the most? And what did they seem to enjoy the least? For privacy reasons, I'm not gonna show you answers to some of the more personal questions, but here's how I kind of break down what I, what I use when I do my reflections. You'll get some actual input from your kids later on on what they thought about their schooling. This is just a time for you to make your own observations and have your own reflection time. Sometimes you notice some things that they don't and vice versa. After looking at each child separately, I like to start thinking about things we did as a group, whether that is an academic subject that we studied together like history this year, or whether it's things like the field trips we took or some group activities we did outside of the house. So this is where I'm going to jot those down. It's basically the same types of questions, just looking at our whole group. The third thing we're gonna look at is getting into the nitty gritty of all the curriculum and resources that we use this year. So what I do is I go into each category, whether it's an individual kid's resources or our group subject resources, and I just jot down everything that we actually wound up using. I note any thoughts that I have, any specific things that were an issue with a curriculum or a book that we used or something we really enjoyed about that curriculum. And then I kind of tentatively decide whether I think I'm gonna use it next year or continue to the next level or if I might ditch it. Some things to kind of like jog those memories are questions like, was it engaging enough? Uh, was it too teacher intensive? Was it really difficult to implement? Were there really good book selections given? Uh, were there too many crafts, not enough crafts? Just whatever comes to mind. Now, do you remember when I said we were gonna get your kids input later? You guys have some homework. 
What I'd like you to do is before you watch part two, I'd like you to meet with your kids, maybe get a snack or a cup of hot cocoa, sit down with them and write it down if you're as scatterbrained as I am, <laughs> but get some answers to questions like, what are some things you enjoyed learning about? What are some books you really liked using? Were there any activities that you enjoyed the most? Also ask them things like, are there any skills they want to improve on or interests that they want to explore? Don't forget to ask them things they'd rather not do next year too. Saying things like, let's not do math next year might not work very well, but we can at least take their interest into account and their thoughts into account when we're choosing what to use and what not to use. I hope you took some really good notes and that you're going to meet with your kids and write down some of their interests. Save these notes because next up we will be talking about what we're actually going to use for the next school year. As always, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Now you have an idea how you're going to reflect on your school year as a whole, but you may enjoy this video up here where I talk about how I make a habit of reflecting quarterly or seasonally. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. I'll see you next time. Bye!